Well, our lessons from COVID-19 series continues now with a look at mental health during the pandemic. Mental health professionals say much of society experienced trauma during this unusual time as their way of life changed dramatically. It's a story that has played out in thousands of families dealing with grief during the pandemic. I'll say my grandma died right before COVID. Um, so I'm definitely connecting the death of my grandma. She died of Alzheimer's. Uh, I'm definitely connecting her death with pre-COVID because I'm looking at, well, a couple things, how different that experience would have been for myself and my family had it happened a month later and we wouldn't have been able to be with her. Um, we did have to postpone. We didn't get to, we didn't have a service for her like many families today. Uh, hopefully we'll still get to do that at some point. For me, that's one of the ways that I'm considering pre-COVID and when I think of memories. Dina Kleba, I'm a psychotherapist and I have been working in community mental health for uh, probably six to eight years or so. Just before the pandemic hit, I had scheduled my very first therapy appointment with a grief therapist. So for a little over a year, I've been in therapy and I've been doing EMDR. And wow, just it's it's been amazing. And I can't express enough that people should just take that step forward. It can be as simple as a phone call or asking a friend. Brianne Tepler, and I was born and raised in Duluth, Minnesota. We're currently right now in Quarry Park, which is just about a block from my house in West Duluth off of 59th Avenue. It's been a year, you know, that year um, date is impactful. And so that will continue. I imagine that that's going to be one of the many anniversary dates that will come out of the pandemic. And so to be prepared for that, aware of it, it's okay, it's normal, uh, and to be able to talk about it and memorialize and, and so on is in itself a coping strategy. So for me, Anniversary Effect has tripled the impact. Uh, I lost my father in 2006, my brother in 2009, my other brother in 2018. And what that means is that's three birth dates, three death dates, three times the impact on every holiday, and then every special date in between. So my children's birthdays, I don't have my dad and my brothers with me. So Anniversary Effect for me, what I call that is it's a black dot on the calendar and I could fill the calendar with black dots with, you know, just that date, that date and just mark them all down. When I'm not paying attention to the dates, I feel them coming. I feel that trauma energy. My body knows that June 8th is coming up and that's the day that my dad died. And I feel it, I have felt off and, or just unusually sad or really irritated. When the pandemic hit, I knew a year later, and as we were coming up on that year, we were all gonna be experiencing a collective anniversary effect. And it's because when the pandemic hit, I knew we were experiencing collective grief. For me, that's the first time I've had that real, every single, no one, no one was spared from COVID. Everyone has been experiencing it. So for me, that's new. Grief wasn't new though. So as we came up on that anniversary, I knew why we were collectively feeling a certain way. While being forced to live in a bubble, we've been forced to live outside that bubble. It's very apocalyptic. It's very scary. It feels like maybe what you would see in the movies. I'm still processing this collective trauma experience because in the world of grief and the process of grief, there's, um, a point where you memorialize, you know, the person who died or the event that occurred, like with 9-11, having um, the memorial, you know, at Ground Zero, which I visited myself, and being able to witness the death and loss and immense trauma of it all is an important part of the grief process. And I will continue to process, you know, how that's going to happen with COVID um, and the pandemic. But I don't know how we're going to do that. Uh, certainly people will be doing that individually. 
as time moves on. How do we do that as a society will be important too. We talk about traumatic experiences in the past. People will say things like, where were you when JFK was killed? Or we talk about 9-11, uh, where were you that morning? The pandemic didn't happen on one day. It happened gradually, but there were very major milestones that happened. One of them being when the governor said that we needed to shelter in place. That was so final for a lot of people. For me, it was very final. I had a lot of plans with my music, with my kids, with work, and all of a sudden, nobody could do anything. You had to shelter in place, and that's really scary. I think that it's important to have some kind of ritual that brings you closer to the people that you've lost, that gives space for them and gives time for them and your thoughts of them. It's like my song, Too Tired to Cry. I drove 150 miles to go back in time, or I woke up and thought of you to keep you alive. also again still in this pandemic and the unknowns of it I think have created especially at the peak of it I mean an existential crisis it connects us when we see so much death it connects us with our own mortality and depending you know on who you are and what you believe but I, from my experience this is my life and and how am I living it and should I be shifting something it is a collective experience that all of us, I mean, I don't know that anybody in the world isn't impacted in some way. And the way we're finding the ways that people are impacted is so diverse. You know, some people, I mean, some people have lost their jobs. Some people work somewhere where, you know, services have increased and, and the demand has increased certainly in, in the world of mental wellness. And. I mean, to not be able to hold a memorial service, to not be able to say goodbye to a loved one who is dying has forced us into a realm of crisis. Putting your hands on your heart space and acknowledging the reality of this is a moment of suffering. This is a moment of suffering. Everyone suffers. And during the pandemic, I've said, you know, everyone is suffering in some way right now. This is a collective experience.